need anybody's money. Actually, people are setting up packs all over the place. I don't care. If they want to give it to me, I'll take it, okay? But I don't need money. I don't want money. So I'm doing my own. You'll see that on Thursday or whatever the hell day I file. You'll see I did really well, much better than anyone ever thought. That was last weekend in Phoenix. Today, Donald Trump releasing his financial disclosure statement filed with the FEC. And according to that statement, he is even richer than he claimed on the day he opened his campaign as of this date. Mr. Trump's net worth is in excess of $10 billion. Mm, $10 billion. Donald Trump's net worth. So what does that mean for his campaign and for the 2016 election? For more, let's turn to our panel. From Newsmax, New York, senior political contributor for Forbes.com and co-host of The Daily Wrap on Newsmax TV, it's our friend Rick Unger. And from Newsmax, Washington, noted Republican strategist Ford O'Connell. Guys, he said he had a lot of money, but $10 billion? He says it'll keep him honest, beholden to no one. Rick, what do you say? You mean to tell me Donald Trump is rich? <laughs> Who knew? Now, really? Listen, I mean, actually, it doesn't tell us anything because with all the class Donald Trump can muster, he tells us at every possible opportunity that he's very rich. So I really kind of see this as a non-event, don't you? Well, uh, when you take a look at this, Ford, in a campaign, when a guy says, look, I got so much dough that I'm beholden to no one, certainly not to K Street, that has a certain populist appeal, ironically, coming from a billionaire. Yeah, except that I what he does I absolutely agree with you, you J.D. Oh, in fact, sorry, I think it's impressive that he actually has $10 billion. More impressive is the fact that he made $360 million last year. I could clearly use his financial planner. That said, you're absolutely right. It plays into the narrative that he's trying to push with the angry populist Republican base, that he's beholden to no one, and that he's a fighter, and he won't back down. And case in point, look at my financial disclosure. I don't need to back down. I'm here to fight for you. So I think this is part of a narrative that could help Trump. The question is which way he goes with it well we know Actually, what was the, the go fun ahead, part Rick. is he doesn't understand he doesn't understand how politics works let him become president and find out how beholden he gets when he's trying to get legislation through and encounters lobbyists from the other side mm, well speaking of on well, the look, job you may training. be talking about legislating rick but let me tell you something when it comes to actual politics and campaign he's bringing an energy to this campaign that I haven't seen before. In fact, I've never seen a candidate be able to drive the news cycle and have the news follow him around versus the other way around. So it's quite impressive. Well, Could Trump I, and, play and Absolutely. I'm, but I'm as of right I'm now, very glad he, he's that you're actually making right, the guys, news time and out, people are listening. Time out. Speaking of the news I'm cycle. I'm glad that you're excited about it, and I'm glad that it somehow seems to be making you angry while you're excited about it. I think it's terrific. Well, I want him to get the nomination. All right, at any rate, <laughs> talking about two guys who want the nomination and driving the news cycle, earlier today, Donald Trump and Ted Cruz got together in New York City. The two candidates reportedly discussed a range of issues. Uh, why do you think those two are meeting, Rick? Do you remember a cartoon, J.D., called Pinky and the Brain? Sure, it was a great one. This is... This is what's being reenacted. You've got Pinky and the brain, Ted Cruz being the brain. He wakes up every morning asking the question, what can I do today to take over the world? Uh, I don't really care why they're meeting. I can't think of two people who deserve each other more. Well, it's really not all that comical or cartoonish. Is it, Ford? There's a reason they got together. No, absolutely. It's very smart on Ted Cruz's part to, to sort of try to cozy up to uh, Donald Trump to figure out whether or not they can forge a partnership going forth on the campaign trail. Let me tell you something. Trump's meteoric rise has really hurt Ted Cruz. Donald Trump sucked all the oxygen out of the room. And if Donald Trump bows out, the person that Donald Trump's most likely to support is Ted Cruz. So this is a good move by Ted Cruz. The question is, where will this go? And frankly, he's trying to catch on to Donald Trump's meteoric rise in his star right now in the media. So smart on Ted Cruz. We'll see where this goes. A new Washington Post ABC News poll. My, 
But let me get to the other subject, and then you can heckle. Uh, the new Washington Post ABC <laughs> News poll shows Trump is gaining ground among Republicans. 57% of GOP uh, GOPers polled say they have a favorable view of Donald now. That was a big contrast to the same poll in May where 65% of Republicans had an unfavorable view. 15 seconds each on this, gentlemen. Your reaction to those numbers. First to you, Rick. I think it's fantastic. When you look at his total unfavorables, which are at 61%, if you're a Democrat, can you imagine a more favorable scenario for running against somebody for president? Doesn't get any better. Well, long time between now and November 2016, Ford. That's absolutely right. This is a good sign for Donald Trump. But Rick is on to a point. He's going to have to show that he can beat Hillary Clinton and be a serious candidate. Right now, he's trailing her by 17. But at the rate he's jumping leaps and bounds, who knows a month from now? All right. And gentlemen, we thank you for your assessment. And as Mr. Trump continues to rise in the polls, a whole lot of people are asking, can he win the nomination? Might he have your vote? Well, to vote, go to NewsmaxPolls.com.